to spend some time showing your work. The main important thing that I ask is to, like, let's practice writing out the formula. I know it's a little bit more work and effort in the beginning, but I'm telling you it will help out until we get used to this. So remember, guys, we can break up tangent and negative 15 many, many different ways. But one way we can do it is tangent of 30 degrees minus 45 degrees. And here, if I notice, I recognize this as a difference of two angles. Correct? Yes. So this tangent of u minus v, which we've written down in our notes, is tangent of u minus tangent of v all over 1 plus tangent of u tangent of v. So that's when you have the difference of two angles. Now, it's important when you guys are dealing with the difference of two angles to understand, this is not a negative v. This is u minus v. Okay, So if I'm doing tangent of 30 degrees minus 45 degrees, all I'm simply going to do, guys, is just, re like, can't you guys see like u is 30 degrees and v is 45 degrees? Yeah. So just whenever you see a u, put in 30 degrees. Whenever you see a v, put in 45 degrees. So I have tangent of 30 degrees minus tangent of 45 degrees. Again, don't do negative 45 degrees. It's 45 degrees. All over 1 plus tangent of 30 degrees times tangent of 45 degrees. Yes? We didn't. Like, we didn't prove them. OK. Is that going to be just for later? Or? No, I mean, it's just, I mean, I can show you the proofs and, and take time to it, but it does kind of like take a little bit of time to that. But yes, that is one thing I kind of mentioned. Like, a lot of things we can add into them. And actually, the proofs for sine and cosine um, and the, for the sum and difference aren't really that bad as far as the proofs and showing you. Um, but it, yeah, it, it just takes up from our class time. So basically, I showed you those other identities and like showed you how they came into. Like we spent really a whole class period actually doing them. If we were to do this again, I would basically be spending more time again showing you how to do them. And it is kind of nice for the mathematical aspect, but it also comes to the point where that's not going to be our main focus for these. It's really going to be how we can apply these in different situations. Um, and they are a little bit more complicated than the other identities we were doing, at least as far as the proof goes. So yeah, basically what I'm asking you to do is assume these are true. Okay. So yes, these are from your textbook. We're just going to assume that these are the correct formulas, and they work. Um, but actually, I will show you some different ways we can use these uh, on some of the other problems. So anyway, so now we're just going to evaluate. And look how many times we have to evaluate, guys. One, two, three, four. Remember when I first taught you guys the unit circle? I said, you guys need to do unit circle like this, right? Well, guess what? Now is that time that I was talking about. You need to know the unit circle very, very quickly. I think it's helpful to kind of to know like which quadrant. We're both dealing with angles in the first quadrant. That's nice, because what is tangent always in the first quadrant? Positive. P -p Positive, right? So we don't need to worry about any kind of crazy stuff going on there. So tangent of 30 degrees, I think about 30 degrees. Yeah, which is pi over 6. So therefore, the tangent is, blink your eye, you got it? Square root of 3 over 3. Tangent of 45 degrees? 1, good job. Um, 1 plus square root of 3 over 3 times 1. OK, so there's your answer. Now, on a quiz, that's a non-simplified answer that, unless I'm asking you to simplify, would be good. I'd be saying, OK, good. Like, I'd probably ask you. Probably ask you guys to go a little bit one more step. However, you're not going to see that on a multiple choice test, right? And you guys know your quiz and your test is going to be have multiple choice problems. So that's not going to be an answer. So what we're going to have to do is use our algebra skills to simplify this. So what do we notice here, guys? What what is this? Does anybody know? Like we've recognized this. It was in chapter three, if you guys remember. There's a special type of fraction here. Exponential. Well, it's a complex. There's fractions within fractions. Right? And if you guys remember, we, we practiced this. We spent a whole chapter on this. To get rid of fractions in the fractions, we want to 
multiply by the common denominator in the numerator and the denominator. So when you apply distributive property here, now I'm going to move over here just so I have enough room. I get square root of 3 minus 3 all over 3 plus the square root of 3. What? Yeah, so this is basically where I'd like you guys to at least get you on a quiz. Like, that's fine. If you want to go further, you, you can. Um, but I'd like you guys, at least you guys to get to hit this point. Okay, this would be simplified for me. However, on some multiple choice problems or answers, they want the radical out of the denominator. And we just did this, was it last chapter? Two chapters ago? Two chapters, two sections ago. So how do we get rid of this radical here? Multiply by the conjugate. Yeah. Because the, that's the formula. If you're adding two angles, you add the numerator and you subtract in the denominator. See how it's plus minus plus minus and then minus plus? So it's the opposite. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. <sighs> and then multiplying by the conjugate, we now obtain, now we got to do FOIL which is not that fun. So we'll have square root of 3 minus 3 minus 9. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. So square root of 3 times 3 is 3 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is a negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9. Negative 3 times a negative square root of 3 is a positive 3 square root of 3. Denominator is a little bit easier because that's a difference of two squares, right? So that's 9 minus 3. Yes, yes, follow. All right. Um, now, I, I know I'm kind of running out of room, because so I'm just going to kind of do what I don't tell you not to do. Um, so therefore, we have negative 3 minus 9 is going to be a negative 12. Plus uh, 3 square root of 3 plus 3 square root of 3 is a 6. Square root of 3 all over 6. And then now, we can divide the 6 to both terms. And that is the answer choice that you would probably have on a multiple choice problem. OK? So for the quiz. You guys are probably looking pretty good. 